Hey guys, what's up? Nice to see all of you again. We are back working on the 416 stroker supercharged 800 horse motor. If you remember in the last episode, we got this block honed and we checked the bearing clearance on the mains and the rods. We figured out what pistons we needed to order and we finally got those in today. So I can now balance the crankshaft. I also have my new one under bearings because if you remember with the standard bearings, our clearances were too loose. So we're gonna cut them in half and run a standard and a one under. That should give us the exact bearing clearance we want. Before I wash the crank and start working on that, I'm gonna check the bearing clearances one more time and then we'll go to the crank balancer. Okay, the dial bore gauge is now zeroed out to the diameter of the crankshaft main journals. I'm gonna stick it in the bearings and measure the clearance. It's way better than plastic gauge. All right, those bearings are on the money. Now onto the rods. Okay, moving on to the next phase in this build, we're gonna balance the crankshaft. First, we need to find our bob weight. So we're gonna measure and weigh all of the components that are going to be inside of the engine. Then we can make these match that weight, put them on the crankshaft, which is not there yet. And then we will be ready to start drilling. Okay, crankshaft is all good. Of course, we got it under one gram front and back. It took a little bit to get there, but it's gonna be perfect. Again, I'm not worried about that being there. Realistically, if this crank was under five grams, this motor would run smooth as glass. You could put a dime on top of it at 7,000 RPM, but I like to get them all under one gram. It looks cool, it makes me sleep easy at night. Okay, before we go any further with the engine block, it's time to gap the rings. I went ahead and installed the cam bearings off camera on the aluminum blocks. They're a little fun. I end up, what I found works best is I actually freeze the bearings for a couple hours and it makes them pop in a lot easier and they end up straighter. So next step, gapping rings. Also forgot to mention for this ring pack, I'm doing a 1.2 top, 1.5 Napier second and a 3.0 low tension third. We are doing a stainless steel top. I always use these in power adder engines. Okay, fast forward a little bit. It is hot as hell right now. My shirt feels like it's a little wet. Anyways, all the hard work is done. Now it's time for the fun part. We get to finally assemble this thing. The block is ready. Pistons, rods, rings, rod bearings are ready. 
crankshaft is balanced, ready, looking beautiful. So, starting with this piece, it's going in there. Shaft is in. Next, we'll lubricate the cylinders and install the rods and pistons. Okay everybody, that is a wrap on this 416 Power Rider engine. There she is all buttoned up, everything torqued down, final installed. Looks beautiful. The piston deck height is perfect, tooth thou in the hole. We're going to run like a 50 thou head gasket, 55 thou head gasket on this combo. That'll give me a, uh, the quench I want considering it's a Power Rider engine. Let's see those really pretty JE pistons. Oh, it looks beautiful. Just awesome. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see y'all next time.